Staying in touch is just a few clicks away. Get the latest news from a Catholic perspective and so much more. Become a RealCatholicTV.com premium member today. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by PewSitter.com, your online Catholic newspaper for the third millennium. CatholicMediaCoalition.org, in line with the church, online with the world. And TheAmericanCatholic.com, politics and culture from a Catholic perspective. Hello and welcome to today's edition of Catholic News Roundup. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Muslim murderer killed. The murderer cornered in France after an eight-day killing spree was killed early yesterday morning, jumping out of his window after an exchange of gunfire with police that ended a standoff lasting over 30 hours. Mohamed Mira, the killer of a rabbi, three Jewish children, and three French paratroopers, is of Algerian descent and claimed to have been tra trained with Al-Qaeda after spending time in the jihadi militant stronghold of Waziristan. Mira told police negotiators that his killing spree was an act of revenge over deaths of Palestinian children, the French army's involvement in Afghanistan, and in retaliation of a French law passed last year banning Islamic face covering veils. Campaigning for Islam. Muslims across America are using a multi-million dollar campaign to inject Sharia law into U.S. courtrooms and to convince the American public that Islamic Sharia law falls in line with American and even Christian values. Following heated debates in over two dozen states over whether or not to ban the application of Sharia law in courtrooms, the New York-based organization, Islamic Circle of North America, invested over three million dollars earlier this month on what it calls its, quote, Defending Religious Freedom Campaign. The campaign, running in 25 major cities including Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles, uses different media to convince the public majority that Islam is a peaceful religion, labeling those who oppose this idea as, quote, Islamophobes. Richard Thompson, president of the Thomas More Law Center, points out, out that there is, in fact, very good reason to fear the rise of Sharia law in our court system. Listen to what he has to say. I think there is a huge threat uh, of Sharia law. Islam is not merely a religion. Islam is a political ideolo ideology that means to dominate, to take over the entire world. Now that doesn't mean everyone's going to be a Muslim, but that means that if you're not a Muslim, you're going to be a second class citizen and you're going to have to pay the jiza, you're going to be a diminutude, that you're not going to have the same rights. He goes on to point out the only way to combat this usurpation attempt of Sharia law to hijack the American Constitution is to put laws in place forbidding judges from applying Islamic law to people in the United States. Marines buck Obama. Resistance to Obama's recent legislation is reaching a fever pitch in the Marine Corps, as, the, as highlighted in the latest issue of the Marine Corps Times. The Marine Corps' publication covers the story anti-Obama Marines, noisy NCOs who defy the chain of command, and why the brass isn't stopping them. According to the article, of 792 active duty troops who took part in this year's Military Times poll, 44 percent disapprove of the way Obama is handling his role as Commander-in-Chief, while under the list of major issues behind their disapproval are the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and relaxing restrictions of women in combat. Another incident that is not likely to draw support from Marines for Obama is the dismissal of a 26-year-old sergeant for posting anti-Obama statements on the Armed Forces Tea Party page. Gary Stein, a nine-year veter veteran who fought in Iraq, was audacious enough to publicly post that he would not follow unlawful orders from President Obama, like killing Americans or taking away their guns. Comments on his superiors say, violate, quote, good order and discipline under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by NewOxfordReview.org, the voice of Catholic Orthodoxy, in print and on the web. And RenewAmerica.com, expanding the influence of America's grassroots in the cause of freedom. Temporary pro-life victory. Life prevails again in the Philippines, for now. A vote on the Reproductive Health Bill, or RH Bill, which would force taxpayers to fund contraceptive and abortifacient services 
was delayed yet again before the country's House of Representatives went into a recess. In an ongoing battle, pro-lifers have defeated different versions of the RH bill, which have been filed and refiled in Congress every year since 1998. The bill features a variety of pro-death items that directly go against the Filipino Constitution, which recognizes the sanctity of life from the moment of conception. Dr. Rene Belecher, Human Life International Country Director in the Philippines, was jubilant about the delay, saying, quote, with a joyful heart, we would like to thank the Lord God, the author of life, as this morning the House of Representatives adjourned for a long recess. No voting was held on the RH bill. Hallelujah. The fight, however, isn't over, as the Filipino Congress will be back in session on May 6th. It's a case that could redefine the limits of federal power, as the Supreme Court in Washington prepares to hear opening oral arguments on Monday over the constitutionality of Obamacare. The media is fighting over coveted gallery seats, while interest groups plan to have demonstrations going on nonstop as the case takes shape, with opening arguments that are the longest the Supreme Court has seen in 45 years. It will be difficult for any media organizations without a presence in the courtroom to get information, since cameras will be banned and only audio recordings of the opening arguments will be released at the close of proceedings on Monday. We will be following this story for you as it unfolds in the coming weeks. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure and tune in tomorrow for your daily dose of Catholic News Roundup right here on realcatholictv.com. Also be sure to check out The Vortex, where Michael Voris talks about how some sexual sins open the floodgates for others. And just a reminder, from Roman Forum, you can see a full-length interview with attorney Richard Thompson of the Thomas More Law Center by becoming a premium member. Michael Boris recently sat down with Mr. Thompson in this latest edition of our interview program, Roman Forum, to be released this Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tell all your friends about us. And as always, God bless you.